can't believe I'm finally saying this, but here's my parents' love story. It's going to be a series called The Lover Who Turned Into The Wife. But for this, we need context. Unfortunately, my mom grew up in a household where there was a lot of cheating, where even though we're married, we have a separate life from that marriage. And at a very young age, my mom never wanted to get married because she saw it as just a piece of paper because that's what she grew up with. She saw my grandma suffer from all the cheating, all the emotional and physical so in my mom's mind, marriage was silly. And marriage was the worst thing that could ever happen to a woman. And most importantly, that she was never going to be the other woman. So after she runs away from my biological father and comes to the United States with my brother and I, she starts looking for work. And behold, the person interviewing her was soon to be my stepdad. But wait, this man was married and had a kid. And in the early stages of my dad, pursuing my mom he let my mom know that they were married but not together and because my mom saw it as normal because that's what she grew up with she didn't see it as a big deal mind you my mom was 21 she had no education was a single mom didn't know how to speak english and i know it's hard to believe but my mom lived in a cocoon for a really long time the way that she described her childhood to me was church home or work no in between my parents continued dating for two years and the biggest question how did my dad pursue my mom why did my mom trust him stick around for a part two I can't. part two of my parents love story how my mom went from the lover to the wife how could my dad be married but pursue my mom and date my mom for two years how was my mom so trusting believe me i asked my mom all of these questions my dad has been taking care of my mom since the first day he met her i'm pretty sure he found out where she lived and the moment that he found out that my mom was a single mom guess who was dropping off groceries at her door guess who was buying her bus passes because she didn't have a car guess who was giving her monthly allowances so that she could be okay Guess who was showing her around San Diego and showed her a completely different life that she didn't know that existed? Ah, the married man, my father. And I know what you're thinking, how irresponsible that he wasn't taking care of his other family. Mm, of course not. A provider man is a provider man. And when he wasn't with my mom, he was working or with his baby girl because he still had to fulfill with his responsibilities. It came to a point where my dad urged my mom to move out of the apartment complex that we were living because it was ghetto. And finally, when we were settled in our new home, that's when my mom introduced us to him. I'm never gonna forget it. That's when my, I'm getting so emotional. That's when my brother, that's when we asked him if he was gonna be our dad and if he was gonna stay and he did. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about going from the mistress to the kept wife. This young lady is sharing the story of her mom that was with um, her now stepdad before he was divorced and how they have to go through a lot of struggle in order to get married and for him to get divorced from his first wife so guys what are your opinion watch the video let me know what your thoughts are but guys i believe if he was not fully divorced he was not being truthful to his own family or he was not being truthful to the mistress right because he has a daughter before by taking care of another family, you're not giving your daughter 100%. I know she's saying that the daughter was financially taken care of, but what about emotionally being cared for? So guys, let me know. Let's jump into the video. And thank you so much again for clicking. Don't forget to subscribe. He stayed, but we're not there yet. Just how he took care of my mom, he also took care of us. But then my mom got pregnant on the second year of them dating. And this is where my dad has to make a choice. Stay tuned for part three. Part three, how my mom went from lover to being a kept wife. At this point, we know that my parents have been dating for about two years. My dad did tell my mom the full disclaimer that he was married, but not together. And because my mom saw that growing up, she thought it was normal. Now, two years go by and my dad continues being respectful, being loving, being a provider toward my mom and us, her kids. Mind you, my dad didn't miss a birthday party, a holiday, school days. He treated us as his own. We already had our little family throughout those whole two years. Because again, even though they were legally married, they weren't together. Then my mom gets pregnant. She tells my dad and my dad through a phone call tells my mom that he was married and that he was actually living with his wife. They were still together. He knew that he needed to make a choice, either stay with my mom and start a new family and start a new life or try again with his current family, current legal family. And this is where my mom said, it's either her or me. 
what my dad ends up deciding is to go back to his legal family and try again. A month or two later, once my mom has her first ultrasound checkup, my mom invites my dad to the ultrasound and that's where he told her that the relationship that he was in and that marriage that he was in had been over since they got married. The only reason why he married his current wife was because he got her pregnant. But he did not love her. But because he knew his responsibility, he decided to marry her and stay to that commitment without expecting my mom to show up. But he told my mom that he had truly fallen in love with her. And the condition that my mom put on my dad before she received him with open arms was that he needed to get legally divorced and that he could never leave again. I don't want you to think that my mom had no options. My dad wasn't the only one offering the world to my mom, by the way. My dad knew that my mom had options. He had always known. But my mom decided to be with him because he truly won her heart over. My mom was honestly devastated that my dad had put her in a situation like that. She became the other woman. She never wanted that. My dad never gave her a choice to decide to pursue the relationship or wait until he was fully divorced. And again, in this moment in time, my mom still didn't want to get married because now she didn't want to fall into the same trap my dad's previous wife did which was, I'll get married to you because I got you pregnant. So what happened after? After they decided that they were going to stay together. Stay tuned for part four. Part, part four on how my mom went from being the lover to being a kept wife. After my dad had fully decided to stay with my mom, divorce was filed. And within six months, he was officially legally separated from his first wife. My dad took all the debt and all the financial burden from the first marriage. He fully supported his ex-wife financially. And this was actually the one trait that my mom loved about my dad. He was extremely responsible and understood commitment. And even though he might have not been physically there with his baby girl all the time, she was well taken care of financially. But the damage had already been made. My mom felt like the other woman. She was pregnant with his kid. And now since my dad is divorced, they had to figure out how to pay the entire debt from the first marriage. Mind you, they weren't married. But there was one thing that my mom wanted, most of all, a family. So for three years, all her checks from work would go straight to my dad so that my dad could pay off the debt, afford child support, and could pay the bills for our household. But during that time, my mom also pushed and motivated my dad to continuously get promoted. And because my dad always wanted to impress my mom, still to this day, he worked his way up to the point where he was debt free and could afford keeping my mom at home. But before doing that, he wanted to get married to my mom. But my mom did not want to get married to my dad. After seeing all the things that she saw, she thought that marriage was the worst thing. But because she loved my dad, she said, fine, but I'm not doing a single thing. And sure enough, that was a green light my dad needed to get all the paperwork, get her birth certificate, get the marriage packet, schedule an appointment with the county clerk, and make marriage happen. Literally, my mom says that all she had to do was sign her name and put the date and say I do because my dad handled everything else. And I know what you're thinking. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Well, I don't know. You're going to have to go to part five to figure that out. Part five on how my mom went from being the lover to a kept wife. This time, I'm going to go ahead and say it from a child's perspective because at this point, I was conscious of what was going on in my parents' relationship. So two years of dating, legal divorce happens, and three years of living together but not married. At the five-year mark, they decide to get married. And at this point, I'm about nine, ten years old. And my stepsister is nine months younger than me. So she's about eight or nine years old. This is when a lot of change started happening. The moment that my parents decided to get legally married was when we started receiving blessing in every single way. Financially, as well as spiritually. My parents decided to start going to church. And I'm so thankful that they decided to start going to church because that's when my parents understood the importance of family and marriage. I feel like when I was telling you guys a story, you guys forget that during the late 90s and early 2000s, culture was different around marriage. And that's when my parents had met. Norms were not the same as they are now. This happened over 16, 17 years ago. So keep that in mind. But at this point, because my parents were conscientious of how important marriage was, this is when the guilt started to eat them up alive. Both my mom and my dad felt extremely guilty for the mistakes that they had done. And at this point, my mom stopped working and was a full-time stay-at-home mom. And I got to see how my mom went through a hardcore depression. Not only because she stopped working, she was someone who started working at the early age of 12, but also she understood what she had done. I guess you could say in her ignorance, she didn't really fully grasp the act that she had committed. And as children, we absolutely felt it. This was a time that my mom was repenting and I saw her struggle because not only was my stepsister not making it easy 
for my mom to cope with her mistake. Because that's another thing. My stepsister was coming over three times a week and every other weekend. And because we were in the same age, literally grew up together, my mom had to deal with two hormonal teenagers and it was not easy for any of us. And with my parents feeling guilty, I know that their relationship started to crumble little by little. From what I saw, I think my dad struggled to set some boundaries with his ex-wife and with his current wife. My mom for a really long time held on to the title of other woman instead of wife. And I got to see that play out with the relationship that she had with my dad's family, with my dad, and with other individuals that didn't know the full story. And I also got to see my dad not back up my mom for a really long time. Again, coming from a child's perspective, I could be wrong, but that's what I perceived and that's what I felt. But what I could say wholeheartedly is that if it wasn't for the grace and favor of God on our family, I don't think we would have made it out the way that we did. For now, I think this is where we're going to stop the story because this is only halfway of my parents' love story. I don't think we're ready for part two. Stick around for the next series of the lessons that I took from my mom being the other woman. Ladies, be wise. Now that we're a little bit caught up with my mom's story, I made a list of lessons that we can all take away from being a lover to a kept wife. And here's the first takeaway lesson that I need you to always remember. If he is not legally divorced, he is still married. Relationships are messy. And remember how I said in the beginning, my mom thought that he was married but separate? That doesn't exist in our books. A man is single, fully divorced, when those papers have been signed by both parties, disclaimers are made, and there's no one in the middle. A fatal mistake that my mom made when she got in a relationship with my dad was that she got involved knowing that even though my dad was separate, that he was still legally married. She didn't know that it was going to play out the way that it did. But listen, a man can change his mind whenever he wants and he doesn't bear the consequences. What did we learn? My mom got pregnant and the moment that he found out that my mom was pregnant with his baby, what did he do? I need to go work it out with my wife and left my mom for about two to three months. Hello? What do I always say? Women always lose. And this is a great example of that playing out. And even then, even if he is a divorcee, you need to give him time to grieve his ex-wife. A minimum of a year. Because my dad had hopped into another relationship as soon as his divorce was filed, he didn't have enough time to grieve his first wife. Because even though he didn't love her at the end, or let me rephrase, even though he wasn't in love with her, in the end, he still loved her. And again, as a child, I saw this play out. I saw how hard it was for my dad to have boundaries with his first wife. And my mom suffered. There is such a thing as upcycled husbands. And honestly, they are a chef's kiss. Like my mom didn't have to go through the entire struggle of teaching my dad how to clean, how to cook, how to have a routine. None of that. Because my dad already knew how to be in a long-term relationship. But again, until fully legally divorced, he is not single. Ladies, be wise. From lover to kept wife lessons. A man in love will move mountains for the woman he wants. Not only did my dad cheat on his first wife, but also got divorced, paid off all the debt to give my mom a life of comfort. Oh yeah, and then married my mom and gave her everything. Ladies, a man in love will do anything for you. I've witnessed it personally as a child and even now as an adult woman, a man in love is the best version that you will ever get from him. So if he's giving you the bare minimum, he's not in love. For a relationship to work, a man needs to be fully in love with you. The only way that you can make a man fall in love with you is by you loving yourself first and respecting yourself. Because that's another thing. Men don't like it easy. Men, not boys. Men who also recognize their worth and want a family, want a woman with standards, with boundaries, and someone they can impress. I truly think my mom ignited something in my dad that motivated him for life. The way that my mom has always described my dad was a dusty diamond. At the beginning of the relationship, my dad didn't understand his potential. My dad hid from any financial opportunity. My mom saw the qualities and the traits that my dad had and pushed him to be better. All he needed was someone to believe in him, care for him, and love him for him to be the best version of himself. In turn, my mom got rewarded with the soft life. And even with my story, you guys know, my husband gave it up 
all before he married me. I told him he needed to change his job, he did that. That I wanted to stay in California, he gave me that. That I wanted marriage, he gave me that too. A man in love is willing to move and do whatever it takes to keep the woman he loves in his life and happy. Stop settling for the bare minimum. The only way that you can inspire a man is by you inspiring yourself first. Have the right energy to attract the right type of men. It starts with you. Ladies, a man has to love his woman more. He has to be able to give up his life for her. From lover to kept wife lessons. This is actually biblical. And I cannot tell you how true this is. If a man is not willing to give up and put his life on the line for his woman, he's not the one, sis. I've said this once and I've said it again. Why do you think I always say don't marry for love? Because a woman shouldn't be in love when she's choosing her forever lifelong partner. She needs to choose him based off of respect and admiration. The man is the one that needs to be in love and love her more for the relationship to work. Believe me when I say this, okay? Because again, the best version that you can ever get from a man is a man in love. A man in love will pursue the hardest careers, will take the risky jobs, will do what is necessary to give the woman of his dreams the life that she deserves. And this also goes with physical protection. A man needs to understand the responsibility of what it means to have a woman by his side. What type of man is he if his first instinct isn't to protect his family, isn't to protect the love of his life, to protect his woman. And I think it's like even a bro code. And how is this biblical? Jesus gave his life for his bride, the church. Of course he resurrected, but you get what I'm trying to say. All of the lessons that I teach you here are freaking biblical, okay? So it really upsets me when a lot of Christian or faith-based individuals attack what I teach, because if you really know God the way that I do, you know that he's harsh. You know that there's no middle with him. He detests warm. You're either hot or cold. So again, think about what I'm telling you. Don't marry for love. Choose your standards above feelings. Let the man be in love and crazy about you. But you stay in line. He might be the head, but you're whispering into his ear where to turn. I don't really like the neck analogy. I much prefer the whisper. It sounds so much sexier. As women, we whisper into our man's ear to guide him and show him where to go next. Ladies, be wise. A man has to... Single moms are desirable by provider men. And I should add upcycled husbands. From lover to kept wife lessons. Listen, even though my mom was a single mom of two kids, she has always had options. She has always had men on her roster. I remember this from a very young age. She had men begging for her attention. I honestly have no idea how my mom does it. When I tell you confidence is sexy, I mean it. It really disturbs me when other people advise other single mothers to not have high standards because they're single mothers. One thing that you ladies need to start understanding is that there's good men who actually look for people, women who are mothers, because they tend to be more mature, have purpose, and intentional. When you are a single mother, you have little ones to protect. So you should be having high standards and you should be picky. And instead of looking for boyfriend traits, you need to start looking for fatherly traits. Start creating and envisioning the perfect dad that you want for your kids and pay closer attention to his character. Is he responsible? Is he committed? What's his previous work history? Again, because you're thinking long term. And I'll give you a personal example, okay? Before moving into this apartment, our previous neighbor who was a divorcee was in a relationship with a single mother of three. And he actually preferred for his future wife to be a single mother because he is a family guy. And because he likes to see that side of women who have responsibility and who have purpose in their life, aka their kids. At the time they were dating, they were boyfriend and girlfriend, but he definitely said he was already thinking engagement. You see what I mean? So if you're a single mother and want to be in a relationship, I'm here to tell you that it's possible, but you're gonna be looking for different qualities than when you did when you were completely single. Now you have little ones to take care of, and it's time to look for fatherly traits instead of just husband traits. They go hand in hand, but you know what I mean. Ladies, be wise. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what your thoughts are in my comment section. Thank you so much and I'll see you all in the next video.